Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com, which is my website, jasonnewland.com, where all my recordings are. And this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Sorry, I'm laughing at Andre. Um, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes and have a quick drink. A couple of quick, quick uh, announcements. Thank you for Davis um, for your PayPal gift. Thank you very much. Uh, so Davis is from Canada. Thank you. I also a message for Melanie. Uh, just awaiting the the details of that thing. Oh no, he's just sneezed. And uh, basically, I'm in a bit of a weird mood now because I had something to eat. I just had a pizza, actually. There's still three pizzas left. Three pizzas, pizzas of the pizzas left. And uh, it's not really relevant, but... I decided I was going to, I wanted to actually go to sleep. But I kind of thought, I know what I'll do. I'll make a recording. Which is a better use of my time. Especially as it's still fairly early. It's only 22 minutes past 10. And... uh, There's a couple of TV programs I want to watch, but I won't be able to watch them till probably for a few hours um, on catch up, which is The Walking Dead and Watchmen. And hopefully Silicon Valley, but I'm not sure when that's first broadcast. Those are the three of my programs that I like to uh, watch on catch up. Um, in fact, apart, apart from Watchmen, I've been watching the other two programs for absolute years and years and years. Ever since they started, pretty much. Uh, although, with The Walking Dead, is is a really interesting story. Really interesting. And I... I um, what did I do I was clicking the phone so I, I tried so I didn't watch the first episode of The Walking Dead when it was first on and I tried to watch it on catch up and I got bored or I don't know if it was bored, but I just thought, uh, I don't know if I could be bothered with this. So I only ever got as far as him. If you've ever seen it, you'll know. But even if you haven't seen it, this isn't spoiling anything. Um, Rick, who's the star of the show from the beginning, he's the man you see on the front of the cover with the with the hat, cowboy hat. Well, it's not. It's a police hat, isn't it? But anyway, he wakes up in a hospital. I only see up to the point where he walks outside and he sees a little girl and that's it and she's standing by a come on then Andre wanted to climb up and uh, basically he's a bit excited but yeah that's as far as I got on on the first pilot episode of The Walking Dead and I I tried to watch it about four or five times and I didn't bother and then eventually I pushed through and it turned out to be one of my favourite TV shows I just didn't like the intro for some reason I don't know why right let me oh another thing The Sopranos I've got a story I want to tell you but I'll quickly tell you 
The Sopranos, when that first came on telly, and they showed it on Channel 4, I think, in 2000, I genuinely could not be asked to watch it. Did not want to watch it. The idea of a bunch of mobsters just didn't interest me at all. At all. And then, and there was a, a double episode was the first, the pilot was like two two hour episode or something. I just couldn't be bothered. But then, and I don't know when it was that I finally really kind of got into it. It might have been 2001, it might have been 2003, I'm not sure. But I fell in love with it and I just, you know, couldn't get enough. But here's a story. Here's me and Andre. He's now lying in my arms. Aren't you? Having cuddles. And he's all thrown off because of a bit of a rear... <laughs> you don't know what to think, do you? It's, an, it's a rearrangement of furniture in here. And he doesn't like that because it's different and he doesn't understand. It's like things aren't where they should be. <laughs> he's, uh, I think there's a name for that. <laughs> he's, uh, he's also a bit claustrophobic, which is weird for a ferret. What are you doing? Doesn't like. <laughs> he wants to fight, but I can't reach him with my arm. But he's not letting me get close enough to touch his to touch him with my hand. So he wants me to get out of the chair and chase him, but I'm not going to. Sorry, Andre. So here's what happened. I was about to make the recording. This recording that I'm doing now. It wouldn't have been this recording. It would have been... It would have been totally different. And... I... So I was on my big black squeaky chair... I was just sitting there and I thought first of all I was going to lean back I was going to lay back not lay back but you know the headrest thing go backwards and listen to an audio book but then I couldn't be bothered to do that I kind of I kind of wanted to go to sleep, but I'd just eaten, and I don't generally lay down on my bed if I've just eaten. Now, maybe if it's like a really light snack, tiny little amount of bits, maybe, but not like like food. I've eaten nearly a whole pizza, and although it's not big. Um, it's, it's enough it was enough I feel I'm going to have a yoghurt when I've done this I treat myself to yo yoghurt ok so I'm sitting here on the chair and as you know it's very squeaky there may be a picture of it somewhere on Facebook when I first bought it I don't know I've had it for for over four years and it's now it's on its last legs basically it's fallen apart well my phone well I went out I got up to go to the toilet by that I mean to go into the toilet I didn't just stand up and do a wee on the carpet those days are long gone so I went back and as I got up my phone Andre there's any way of Andre getting into trouble he will he just has to he has to find a way anyway I'm just watching him because he's I want to make sure oh <laughs> he just <laughs> he just got on onto my abdominal uh, sit up board but once he gets on it, because it's it slopes down, so he just slides off it, which is quite funny to watch. 
he always lands on his feet. And I oh, now he's oh, Andre, behave. Okay, I'll get back to it. So my phone fell off the armrest of my chair inward, not on the floor, but inward. So I just, I thought I left it. I thought, okay, it's just going to be on the chair when I get back. When I got back, it wasn't anywhere to be seen. So I must have slid down the side of the chair, which it has done before. I've I've had stuff fall down there and, you know, and a couple of times the phone's done it. Normally I manage to get the phone, catch it. Other times, the once it's I had to sort of had to... Sh- shake the chair and got it out that way well this time nothing I could do nothing I did was working couldn't find it couldn't see where it was at all and uh, I called on my friend for help and not my invisible friend but you know a real person and he he came up and we couldn't figure out what to do and so we ended up taking the phone taking it apart a little bit it's a two man job because it's quite a big chair um, and the only way we could get to the phone was by ripping out the insides of the, of the chair we just couldn't get to the couldn't get to it because it was tucked down right tightly so it's just practically impossible to get to. So now the chair's ruined. It was ruined already. It was already broken, but it's now for the for the waste heap, junk heap, uh, fly tipping. No, not fly tipping. Um, you know, some ways it's got to be sort of disposed of now. Which is a bit of a shame because I've had that chair for ages, and now it's it's gone, and it's too dangerous because of Andre. He goes under it, and in fact, it's on its side in the corner of the room, and Andre thinks this is new toy. He can now climb inside of the part that he always wanted to climb into, but he couldn't because it was covered. Now it's not covered anymore. He can get through, and he's loving it. He's there now doing it. He's climbing through the springs. So I almost feel like I should just leave it there for him to play with, but it's a bit of an eyesore. If I wanted to have an eyesore in the corner, i put a big mirror up. You know, I don't want to be looking at something that's a bit... I don't know if you can hear him, he's scratching away. So yeah, that's what's happened to the chair. So luckily, I've got um, I've got a spare chair. It's not... It's not mine, it's my friend's, he's lent it to me. It's a fold-up one, but it's uh, it's kind of like a deck chair, but I would say kind of like a, a garden chair, not a deck chair, but uh, something that you can sit in the garden or in a conservatory or something like that, and it's it's okay, you know? But I can't. I can't put my head back. So I could get a pillow or something and do that, but I'm now kind of... Yeah. Andre, he's so... He's going to be at that all night, you know that? I should probably take a little video of him before I shut it, close it, chuck it out. So he's. I could leave the chair bit because the the seat bit's there. So I could leave that for him to sit in. 
that could be his little bed he might like that you know I might do that so the seat that I used to sit in because it comes off it came out of the well yeah well, no it's not the seat is it no it's not a seat it's the the backrest but that's as good as pretty much the same as the seat really so the backrest came out so ultimately I need to get a new chair now oh, oh. never mind he's loving it he's absolutely loving it I can't believe it. it's it's like he's exploring this new thing <laughs> I just hope he doesn't get his nails caught because sometimes he does that he gets his nails caught and he just can't and because he's scratching stuff that he shouldn't really be scratching because in a while they'd be scratching the dirt and the mud which would shorten their nails naturally but they wouldn't be scratching at chairs you know that wouldn't be a kind of a natural uh, field phenomenon in the wild I don't imagine also I want to thank the um, a few people that have sent that have left testimonials the last uh week or so well the last you know recently um it's really lovely to get a testimonial on my website and to hear the positive reviews and the positive words so i appreciate everyone that does that thank you i don't reply it doesn't really give me the option to reply on the testimonials because they just you post them and i either accept them or discard them you know uh, I've had a couple of that to discard, but that was from a friend, my friend Sebastian, who sent a few <laughs> weird messages. Um, and yeah, so that's quite funny, but I didn't put them public. But uh, generally, I haven't had any horrible comments, which is nice. Be a bit, I always find it weird that people would want to do would put the energy into that if they did but it's up to them isn't it I suppose I'd never I'm never going to allow it <clears throat> on the website anyway because what is he doing oh was, now he's on the headrest and he's trying to get inside the headrest and I don't know if he's going to be able to get out again oh man oh yeah he should be alright I hope well if he isn't he's stuck isn't he I suppose <laughs> I'll just rip the whole thing open if I have to that's the only, oh, now he's getting out. Are you okay, Andre? <laughs> Honestly, I can't see where he is or what he's doing. I know where he is as far as the piece of furniture is inside, but I don't know what's inside that furniture. Whether there's room for him to manoeuvre or which wouldn't bother him actually so he's gone in one hole and it's almost like he's looking for another way out but one hole isn't enough for him so what so he's not wanting to come out of the hole he went into I don't think oh he's now coming out the way he came in yeah he's out and he's now going to climb up on the abdominal board again and he's now about to slip off again 
Oh no, he hasn't yet. He's now on the handlebars of the abdominal board. Oh, he's getting his hang around it. His his hang is getting the hang of it. Wow. He manoeuvred on and off there really easily. He's starting to learn. That's the thing about him is if he finds a way somewhere, he one trial learning for him. So sometimes he doesn't realise he can do stuff until he tries and then once he's tried that's it. For example, I had a, a chair that was not the back of the chair wasn't too far away from the bookcase. Uh, he never attempted to to jump from the to the, the chair to the bookcase until once and I saw him do it and he landed and he could do it easily and I took him off and from that point on constantly doing it pushing the books off and I had a video of him doing it once and he literally he pushed so much stuff off of the the shelves like the whole lot it was ridiculous and he was up at my head height up there on the shelves knocking stuff off as much as he could but once he'd learned to do it once he knew he could do it it was easy he didn't have any issues he just did it kept doing it over and over again we can't always judge distance. So from the chair to the table, I know just the distance away from where he'd attempt it. Even though he could perhaps make it, possibly wouldn't. He'd probably end up getting his, his hands on there and then falling on the floor. By his hands, I don't mean chucking his hands on with a bit of rope. I mean, you know, touching it with his hands. And... I kind of know the distance because I've watched him attempt and I've also watched him try and figure out the distance and there's a certain space that he won't do. I don't know what it is in his head, I don't know how he works it out but it's quite clever. Oh dear. Oh, I miss my chair. Oh. This chair just isn't very comfortable at all, really. It's okay, but it's not, um, it, it's the kind of chair you'd sit in if you were talking to somebody Definitely not gonna I'm not gonna fall asleep in it. In fact it's not even I don't think it's sturdy enough really to take me falling asleep. Oh my chair. My big black squeaky chair. Although this is also black, but it's littler. Um but can squeak a little bit but much less so so I can I can move I can move my legs now Andre's Andre's in full throttle at the moment isn't he wonder why he just really get a chance to see him in action just completely excited and that's how he is it's almost like he's got a new a new set of toys so now I know what to give him for Christmas just some junk an old junky chair one that's just And now he's got a ball that rattles. <laughs> it 
it's actually got a whole box full of toys that I've got a lid on that I don't even put on the floor so if I did it'd be all over them when there was this uh, little um, these little tennis balls that I bought for him and he ignored them like he ignores pretty much anything I ever buy him occasionally he'll grab it off me and run off with it sometimes he'll just ignore it yeah it depends you know just what, what mood he's in but these tennis balls he just did not was not interested at all and I found them I found them a few months ago I found found one of them and it was completely frayed like really frayed like a dog's like a dog had been at it and it's a very small tennis ball it wasn't like a proper one small one and I thought how did it get like that because he doesn't even touch it and I'm sitting at my desk on my laptop and I notice Andre is on his back and this little green thing in his hands well actually it's in his mouth and his hands and it's a tennis ball and he's biting it and just shaking it around and it was so cute to watch which just shows that he must get he must do so much stuff when I'm not around maybe when I'm asleep comes in and plays with his toys because I'd never seen him play with that ball before ever and I found the other one and that was also frayed and all just ripped to bits not ripped to bits but you know definitely bitten he wants his dinner and I just it's on the shelf because I hid it from him because I had to because I had a dog up here and the dog would have eaten everything it's alright Andre in half an hour's time I'll put the food down for you <laughs> half an hour are you messing with me So he's got this box and it's got uh, Legos all on the outside, like pictures of Lego. And it's a storage, it's not a box, it's like plastic with cardboard. It's a storage box, but quite a nice one, you know. Uh, like with fabric. It almost looks a little bit like a washing bag. You know when you go to the laundrette, that kind of material. Uh, like the big, the ones that last forever, you know. I know nothing lasts forever. But, except these recordings. <laughs> Ooh, and my love for you. Ooh. So, oh, what is he doing now? What are you doing now? There's bits of eggshell all over the place as well, because I gave him an egg. And he loves eggs, like raw eggs. And I don't give them to him every day, but that was something that he would eat in the wild. And I give it to him, and I haven't given him an egg for ages. And I gave him one yesterday, and I just, and he can smell it, it's quite weird, he loves the smell of an egg. It's like he can smell inside the egg, through the egg. So I, I chucked the egg on the floor for him, like rolled it on the floor, and in the past, what he'd normally do is he'd eventually break the egg and he'd break the, the shell himself. He'd break it against the skirting board or the door or, you know, he'd do what he needed to do. Well, this time he gave up. <laughs> he's, he's just obviously in a lazy mood. But I didn't know where the egg was. So first of all, I thought, well, I don't, now having an argument with a little ball that rattles <laughs> I 
need to get his food. Do you want some food, Andre? Oh, he's gone and got him his food from there. There you go. Oh, he's eating it now. Think if he's hungry, I don't want him to be hungry. He hasn't got. There's no reason for him to be hungry ever. He's always got his food. So if there's no, uh, if he's eating his wet food, then he's always got dry food that he can eat always, twenty four hours a day. And he's he's not like a. Like some animals will just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and just they'll keep eating. He doesn't. He just eats until he's full up and then he'll leave it and he'll come back for more later. So he didn't used to be like that. When he was first little, he used to, because he was bullied by his brother or his brothers and sisters or I don't know whatever when he was little when he was a baby they used to push him out out of the circle and they'd get the food first and then when he's with his brother when he first moved here I had him, him and his brother and his brother was getting to the food before him as well so as soon as I had him up here on his own he was scoffing the food down and he was also hiding bits of the food in parts of the flat which is kind of a standard thing for ferrets to do anyway. But he really was... He didn't want me anywhere near him when he was eating. He finally got to eat, you know, without any kind of interruption. So he was happy after that. I wonder how much he remembers... I don't need to know how much he remembers, but I just do wonder. I wonder how much he remembers of his life. Times he's been out. Times that we've played. (laughs) It's probably all fits in kind of together with... Into one memory, probably. It's all kind of very similar, I guess. I've never taken him on holiday. He's never been to a wedding. Never even been to the beach, or has he? Has he? No, he hasn't. I have this memory of taking him to the beach, but I don't think I did. Perhaps I should do next year. Not in the summer, because the summer's a bit too hot for him. But maybe sort of February time when it's still cool enough but it's still kind of a a relatively nice day I might take him to the beach and let him play in the sea if he wants to he probably won't want to but who knows trying to guess what he wants is it's an impossibility really because he really does he doesn't like water at all but who knows what he's going to do he might jump in the sea he did it once he's never liked the water ever and then I was in the park with him and we was at the it's kind of a duck pond but like a, a boating pond thing and we were at the side of it and he just jumped in he didn't he didn't slip he didn't fall he jumped into the water he like dived in So maybe he was hot and he wanted to cool off. And he just swam along for a little bit. I had had the the lead on and everything. But he chose to do it. (laughs) Unless he looked in and he saw the reflection and he thought it was another ferret. I'll have that ferret. I'll have you. (laughs) Who knows? Who knows? Excuse me. I heard a really 
funny joke earlier. It was Steve um, Steve Martin. I can't remember what it was. I can't remember the joke now. It was from an album from 1981. Um, I think it was called The Martin Brothers or something. But it's... Uh, so he did, a th I think, three comedy albums. But two were in the, the 70s, I think. Um, Let's Get Small. I think the other one might, might have been Wild and Crazy Guy. I'm not 100% sure. And that was before he was a film star. He was a huge, huge comedian in America. Like absolutely massive uh, in the late 70s which is well I suppose maybe early 80s as well I don't know but he was massive he was selling out arenas and uh, <laughs> there was this joke I can't remember what it was but it was funny it's very funny it was Oh, I don't remember. Oh, I don't remember, but it's, it's. I was listening to it this morning. What is afternoon? Or last night? I don't remember. Oh. So, what was I going to say? I'd, I'd, uh, I've had, I've had quite a few. Well, excuse me. That's uh, old Steve Martin. See, I I didn't know about Steve Martin being a comedian until 1989. Quite specific, isn't it? 1989, I started buying videotapes of stand-up comedians and I bought every, everything that I could get Steve Wright Steve Martin, Eddie Murphy Richard Pryor uh, who others was there Rodney Dangerfield um, Emo Phillips uh, who else was there also had things from Chubby Brown um, uh, 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 Robin Williams I had all of his ones at that time and Lenny Henry uh, probably French and Saunders Live Live Billy Connolly uh, live Lenny Bruce I think I had live one of him live recordings of I had Eric Morecambe and Ernie Wise uh, had live recording possibly Les Dawson who else was there I had quite a nice little collection um, I favoured, favoured, it's a weird word isn't it, favoured, I liked, I liked the American stuff, I think I liked the stuff that was new to me, so like Les Dawson wasn't new to me because I grew up watching him on telly, I loved him but it wasn't new, you know, it was Billy Connolly wasn't Billy Connolly was a little bit new because he was quite adult comedy so I didn't really I hadn't really seen much of his comedy on telly um, but definitely never seen the likes of Richard Pryor uh, before until Yeah, till 1989. 
and what other ones? See, Rodney Dangerfield, I knew about him because he'd been in movies, so I knew him as being a comedy actor, didn't know him as being a comedian. Because a lot of the American comedians weren't on television. In fact, a lot of the English comedians weren't on television either. You know, there was, uh, or at least not the programmes that I watched when I was a kid, we had a lot of a lot of the comedians were aimed at like family audiences although they could also be adult as well you know but I never really got to see the adult comedy so I got we got people like um, Les Dennis uh, Bobby Davro Russ Abbott um, what's his name? Probably the most famous out of all of them, really, who passed away recently. Um, uh, 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 it'll come to me. But other ones, uh, Keith Harris, who had the puppets, uh, Orville and Cuddles. And there's, it's terrible, I can't remember this man's name, but he was Freddie Star, Freddie Star, that's it. So he was, I say the most famous, because I probably, I think I'd be right in saying that out of all the family entertainers, like comedians, he's probably his name would be the most well known out of all the comedians from like the early 80s kind of time that were on telly but he also did adult humour as well sort of on stage and stuff which I didn't know at the time but I said oh my favourite of all my favourite of all was uh, Kenny Everett See, Kenny Everett, he wasn't a stand-up comedian. At least I don't think he was. But he was a, a radio DJ. But very funny. Really funny. And he got his own TV show. I think it was called the Kenny Everett Television Show, I think. <laughs> and um, it was, well, I, I found it hilarious. And I loved it, loved him, and it was, I became a fan all over again in the early 90s, when he was, he had a radio show on, I think it was Radio 2, I think, and he had these jingles that was just funny, funny jingles that he, he clearly made himself because his voice was on them. And uh, it was great. It was really funny. And in the job I had at the time, it, it needed a little bit of livening up. You know, I think I was putting stickers on bits of meat all day, and it needed to have something in the background that was amusing, was nice. Um, so yeah so I think Kenny ever out of all the uh, I'd say out of the funny well, they're all funny um, but out of the ones that I liked most when I was a kid like young I'm talking like 10 10 years oldish. Um would be Kenny Everett and yeah probably um, what's his name Harris with Cor Orville and uh, Cuddles Keith Harris um, but that's because I, I well it's not because but I did see Keith Harris and Orville and Cuddles live because I was on a TV show when they were on 
so that was pretty cool. But and Orville was huge. Had a had a huge hit in the charts. I wish I could fly. I would sing it to you now, but for those that are kind of nodded off to sleep, it would probably wouldn't be fair. And for those that aren't asleep, it probably wouldn't be fair. And those that aren't listening, it probably wouldn't be fair. And just in case my neighbour can hear me, it wouldn't wouldn't be fair. So yeah, I won't. And Andre, it wouldn't be... Well, actually, if it'll annoy Andre, I might give it a go. I'm going to blame him for the chair being ruined. I don't know. I just... I need to blame a human. I need to blame somebody. So, yeah, I... Been... Making some changes... to my website and I'll tell you what it is but I haven't kind of really launched this thing yet it's it's in it's a work in pro- progress and it won't be completed till probably the end of the year because uh, it's quite time consuming putting it all together but I have a new website and uh, it's called jasonnewland.store S-T-O-R-E as in store so jasonnewland.store it's I've already got a hundred and hundred and I don't know how many recordings on there already uploaded and everything so at the moment what it's going to be is I've been making changes to my website I started with these let me bore you to sleep recordings Uh, and from I think the first hundred and 130 I've I've got over 200 on the Jason Newland dot store, but um, so far I've just got over just over a hundred of the first hundred. Let me bore you to sleep recordings um, that you can download for one pound, or you can just stream it for free. You know, like or like normal. So it gives you an option to help out the free service by downloading the recording. So eventually, all every single one of my recordings will have that option. So it's just an option. I mean, you can listen to the recording online. You can stream it, or if you want to, you can you can download it and have it as your own personal recording, the exact duplicate of what I've recorded, you know, directly. And so it gives you an option to help. And for a pound, it's you know it's not a lot I don't even get that whole pound anyway because um, PayPal take off a percentage and then there's a percentage to be put into my bank so I don't get I think about 75% of that something like that I might, I might be wrong but it's, it's, it's there is a charge to me for every bit of money that comes in but that all goes to help the cost and you know that's what I put it on there for so I'm going to have every single recording I do eventually everything that I have done and everything that I will do will be available to download for one pound each recording if you want to or you can just stream it on the website in the future in the future it may come a time when some of the older recordings will only be available to download but that's not the case at the moment at the moment I'm going to keep everything as it is you know everything's going to be uploaded and you'll be able to stream it like you can anyway and you can still stream it on Spotify or Stitcher or iTunes exactly how you did before 
but you have the option if you want to help out to download it onto your own phone onto your laptop or whatever and you can just have it as your own recording you know your special JSON recording and so that's that's the next step in the evolution of me <laughs> um, and at the same time it's actually put the cost up at the service it's cost for me it's costed that's an extra 30 30 pound or whatever a month to have that to have that service of offering the for them to be downloaded so I have to work out I'm going to put um, on my website I'm going to put a running costs page just so because I, I like to be transparent with this stuff I like to try and just sort of let you know and it's just uh, I mean that doesn't include the amount I've paid out for other things like software hardware and even the garden shed I mean that cost me 250 to buy plus just over 100 to get put up um, and that's going to be the you know the my studio eventually when I can get it soundproofed and do all the things that need to be done to it but the then all the soundproofing that I bought this year that's on my walls in my living room that cost I probably spent about 150 200 pound on that this year but I quite like the look of it actually I was hoping really was hoping that I'd be able to make recordings in this room in the living room this is before I got the shed I, I put I dangled I dingled and dangled about getting a shed for well over a year well over a year and I thought no but then I thought yeah I'd do it anyway so I was hoping to get this room soundproofed so that I could just make recordings and it'll be quiet and to be fair even with the window open as it is at the moment it's fairly quiet especially now that Andre is not running around trying to do whatever he was trying to do mark his territory I think he was trying to let every let me know that the chair bits are his now which is a bit weird so yeah, I think I'll do that tonight I'll work out not all the other little bits I've done yeah, not all the other things like the shed or anything but just uh updated running costs from now I, uh, I don't know if I mention it I purchased the domains for probably about 10 to 12 no, about 10 web websites something like that including letmeboydisleep.com and stuff like that and then I decided that I just couldn't afford to do it all because it was just it was too expensive to run all those websites and the monthly cost and the yearly cost because each domain costs £50 or £55 to re-register every year so that's over £500 for those domains each year which is quite a lot to just pay out all in one go so I got rid of them and then I, then I thought maybe I've changed my mind maybe I can have them back and I went and basically they'd deleted them even though I bought them for the year they'd, they'd released them so that I know it was no longer the owner and for me to re-register them for myself would cost £90 each so it's pretty much £1,000 to re-register those 12 domain names I was like what <laughs> what on earth so yeah so they're, they're gone but I do have the 
jasonnewlander.com that I've had for, I don't know, 12 years, 13, 14 years. And the jasonnewland.store, which is new. I've had it for a few months, but it's, it is up and running. It's available, but I'm not promoting it. You know, I'm just in the middle of building it and it's going to take quite a while to do so because it's very it's just time consuming it's it's which I'm okay with you know it doesn't have to be done quickly it's not really a hurry I just like to get it done I want to get the let me boy to sleep recordings done to the point where every new recording I can put the, the banner on the page which offers you the opportunity to, to download it and it will take you to the jasonnewland.store page where you can just download it and what you can do is you can sign in and become a member of the jasonnewland.store so that every time you buy a new session, you can just down just log in. So you haven't got to put your details in, in again every time. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. But that's kind of the evolution of this leading towards um I suppose more of a business model in the future. Because I'm gonna need to earn a living at some point. You know, I've still got, how many years have I got? 20, I've got 19 years until I can retire. I think I can retire at 68. It might be 69. I think it's 68. But by the time we get to 68, it'll probably be 70. Because realistically, in 10 years time, the retirement age might have gone up even higher. So I'm not going to be able to rely uh, to retire before I'm 68. So that means I've got 19 years to earn a living. And it just makes more sense to do something that I'm... Well, to do something that I enjoy doing. And also to do something that I'm good at or that people tell me I'm good at hopefully I'm quite good at some of this stuff so it makes sense to kind of pursue this but I also still want it to be free so I've kind of got to figure my way around that there's always going to be something for free I'm never going to you know I, I love doing it for free I don't I don't want to charge anyone ever anything ever but it's just, you know, it's the, it's the progression of this. So at the moment, I'm going to give people the option. You can download it, download it for a pound. You can listen to it for free. It's up to you. Um, and then in the future, I don't know, we'll see what happens. But I'm probably going to maybe start making a few premium recordings that people can download and that isn't free you know but ultimately I just I want to just be able to be of use that's more important to me than anything really and I like what someone said to me a testimonial that I got through yesterday I think it was well, it might have been today and it was that um, I help to I help to reduce the chatter in your mind when you listen to me. Almost it, it's uh, I suppose it could be a distraction. It could be calming down. It could be just my 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 boring drivel. It could just be 
almost like an antidote to the the frustrations of the day or the mind because I suppose maybe it's it's almost not mind numbing what I'm talking about possibly so your mind just starts to shut down and just starts to calm down and sometimes tedium and boringness has a power in itself to just sap away some of those more extreme feelings that are no longer needed so you can just relax and and also you can feel good about yourself because you can just <laughs> you can think wow at least I'm not him kind of you can feel at least I at least I'm not at least I'm not talking for an hour about nothing <sighs> at least at least I'm not him Mind you, at the same time, you might be a little bit jealous because of Andre. Because, yeah, because I know there's a lot of Andre fans out there. More Andre fans than Jason fans, I know. But I don't blame it because he is... He's just so beautiful. He really is. It's weird. I don't realise that my... I thought my life partner would be a ferret. <laughs> my a male ferret. Wow. I'm gonna marry him. <laughs> no, he's a cute little thing. Mind you, I never know where he is half the time. He's got different places that he sleeps. And he likes changing where he sleeps because he knows that I will come and get him. And take him out into the cold for a walk when he doesn't want to. Or cut his nails when he doesn't want to. Or worse of all, give him a bath. I don't have to say the words when he doesn't want to because he never wants that. Sometimes he wants to go out for a walk. Sometimes he seems even grateful to have his fingernails being cut. He never wants a bath. Oh no. But he's okay. He's a. What is he? He's something. There's some. There's some words for him. I don't know what the correct words would be, but he's. This chair's uncomfortable. I don't like this chair. What we're we gonna do? Oh, oh this is my chair. I mean, with the other chair, because it was quite big, so it did support my weight. Oh, I'm not an elephant. I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I don't weigh like fifteen ton, but I felt like I could just sit back and manoeuvre myself a bit, you know, and know that the chair wasn't going to collapse but this thing I don't know if it's I almost feel like I need to move a bit gently and see the little creak yeah it should be fine it probably just means I spend more time at my table at my desk on the computer which is a good thing because I need to well I want to get more work done on the la on the the websites there's a lot to do but before I do that I just want to say thank you to everybody reminding yourselves remind yourselves to be kind to yourself And I know I say this, but there's actually this meaning in this. Because my friend Gunasara used to say it to me in 2004. And I was going through a heck of a time. 
emotionally. And he, I basically used to offload on him. And I, I, I shouldn't have done it on, on retrospect. I shouldn't, I, I, you know, I mean, um, he wasn't my counsellor. He was my friend, but because he was so kind and generous and caring, I kind of used to almost use him as a counsellor. But he used to tell me to be kind to myself, and it took me a long time to kind of understand what that meant. To just take a step back. Being kind to yourself can be as simple as just doing something that perhaps you give yourself a hard time over. So, you know, having a, a bit of chocolate. I mean, obviously not maybe if you're diabetic or anything, but if you, you know, if you say you you normally give yourself a hard time about eating chocolate and you need to be eating healthily and all that. Well, every now and then doing something that maybe isn't particularly healthy for you physically may be really healthy for you emotionally giving yourself a little bit of a break, you know. Or having a bath. You know, a long, soaky bath. Or listening to your favourite album. Or watching a box set of, I don't know, it could be Friends, might be maybe your favourite sitcom. You could, whatever it is, or Harry Potter films. Or reading a book. watching YouTube videos, funny videos you like. Maybe going for a run if that's a thing that you like doing. Doing something that is just something that you enjoy. It's, you know, taking a break, being gentle with yourself, being kind to yourself. And being kind can to yourself could also be not eating any chocolate. You know, it's, it can go both ways, I know. But emotionally, just giving yourself a break. So it might, be, might mean drinking less alcohol. It might mean eating less food. That might be a way to be kind to yourself. It depends on the situation. So it can be also mean doing something that feels really nice. Almost like a treat, you know? If you was gonna do something special for someone that you care about, except this time, this way, you know, it's you doing it for you. Whatever it might be. So, I'm gonna bring this to an end. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. One of the reasons you deserve to be happy is because you have helped many people over the years. Many people, people that you wouldn't even know you've helped. Might have been a kind word, might have been a smile, you might have opened a door for someone, you might have. Uh, let someone cross the road. You might be, you know, just stopped your car and let them cross the road safely. And it changed the way that they behaved when they crossed the road, walked to the garage. And maybe they were friendly to the person that worked in the garage rather than maybe they might have been grumpy. Which then, you know, there's a, there's a domino effect to this stuff. So you've actually helped people. And that's a very vague situation there. But you've also helped people, probably moments that you remember from the past. Regardless of whether they appreciated it, whether they told you they appreciate it, or whether even if they noticed it. You've 
help people and you deserve to be happy. So that's it for me. Next record and I'll just say be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. But I thought I'd expand today just to let you know I'm not just saying those words just for the sake of it. I've actually thought it through. So take care. Speak to you next time. If you would like to leave a testimonial, go to my website. Bye.